But people are on a conveyor belt to hell. But people are on a conveyor belt to hell. But people are on a conveyor belt to hell. But people are on a conveyor belt to hell. Belt to hell. Belt to hell. Belt to hell. Beloved, we can't quote Jesus telling the whole world to go to church. But as believers, we can quote Jesus telling us to go to the whole world. Now what is sovereignty? Sovereignty, by definition, is supreme power or authority. But I'd like to better put it as supreme power and supreme authority. Those two go hand in hand. In fact, they're one and the same. Now what is free will? Free will is law and love. We look at it that way. Law and love. So, as a father, I tell my children, clean your room. Keep your room clean. I lay down the law. I give them an order. Now, they are to do it because I'm their father and I told them to. So, therefore, they're obeying me and they're doing it. That's the law that they're following. Say, hey, daddy said we have to keep our room clean. Daddy said we have to clean our room. So, we're going to do it because daddy said so. Now, I hope that one day my children will get, get to the point where they keep their room clean because they know it's the right thing to do. They know that daddy is happy in them keeping their room clean and they know it's good for them. Right? They see all the benefits. So in love, because it makes daddy happy and it's the right thing to do and you know they are to love themselves as well as their room, they go ahead and do it. So they have the opportunity to obey the law and God willing one day they get to the point where they follow the law in love not just because daddy said to do it but they see all the benefits the wonderful things in it and it's a beautiful thing and a lovely thing to obey daddy's wishes so some people look at free will and say hey I have the opportunity to choose right from wrong I have the opportunity to do good or bad and whatever I choose, it's my prerogative and it's no big deal because I have free will. But that is not the intention of free will. God gave us free will because like my children, when they start to do things that I want them to do on their own, it pleases me. I'm ecstatic about it. right? And I give them the law because I know it's best for them. And it's best for me too. Right now, God, who is sovereign, who has supreme power and supreme authority over all things, He gives us the opportunity to choose. We can choose good or bad, right from wrong. But those of us who are His children, we opt out of the option of choosing bad, of choosing wrong. We want to walk in obedience to the father we want to walk in love we want to do what god has told us to do and what he wants us to do and therefore we thank the holy spirit because the holy spirit is the one that makes us to walk in love so again free will law and love we want to walk in love which makes us abide in the law or abide by the law now i say all that to get to this Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20, which reads, And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He is sovereign. Okay? We establish that Jesus is sovereign because he has all authority. Not some, not on some days. He has all authority. Verse 19 says, Go, therefore go he's giving us a command he's laying down a law go therefore and make disciples of all nations <laughs> everyone we meet everyone we encounter wherever we go whatever we're doing this is to be a at the forefront of our minds go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit teaching them how can you teach someone if you don't know yourself? It's very important for us to read our Bible, to get involved in Bible study, to uh, inquire in the minds of our leaders, our pastors, um, our elders, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Huh. So everything that he's commanded us, which includes this great commission, 
and behold, this is part of the commandment, I am with you always. Some say, remember, and remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. that last part. And behold, or remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. He puts the responsibility on us to know that, to remember that, to keep that in our mind, that he's with us. Because we're going to need Christ if we're going to obey all the things that he said to do. So beloved, Jesus is sovereign. He has all authority in heaven and on earth. And he has told us what to do. Now, we don't want to be legalistic and say, well, we have to do this. You know, I'm going to, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I'm going to make sure that I go and speak to one person because it, we want to do this, but we also want to do it in love. Because if we're being legalistic about it, is the Holy Spirit moving you? Are you driven by the Holy Spirit? And if the Holy Spirit is not moving you, then what are you actually going to be saying to the people that are lost? What are you going to be saying? Are you going to be saying your words or the words that come from the Holy Spirit, the words of the Father? And it's the Holy Spirit that does the work. So if we're going to be doing it on our own, how is that going to work out? So beloved... How are you in obedience to the Great Commission? Do you tell people about the love of Jesus Christ? Do you help them see their condition? Do you help them see that they are sinners? And encourage them in believing in Jesus Christ. Encourage them and guide them, direct them in them seeing that they need a Savior. Do you pray for them on top of the work? I believe it's not enough to just pray for someone from afar. But we ought to engage. We ought to spend time with the non-believer. So beloved, how are we in obedience to the Great Commission? Are we going out and talking to the non-believer? Engaging with them? Showing them the love of Jesus Christ? Helping them to see their condition, their fallen state? And how and why they need Jesus Christ. The purpose of Jesus' death. And what it means for them. Are we engaging with those who are lost? Those who are perishing? Do you have a conviction? Do you have a compassion for the lost world? How are we engaging? Do you engage people head on? And just say, I would like to talk to you about the love of Jesus Christ. Excuse me, ma'am, sir. Are you born again? Are you straightforward? Or do you invite people to spend a moment to explain something to them? Maybe you might ask questions like, Do you believe in heaven? Do you believe in hell? Where do you think you're going when you die? Do you think about death? Do you think you could escape death? All these different things, I mean, we could ask people, there's different ways to approach them. You know, but are we doing them? Are we engaging in the Great Commission? Are we obedient to Jesus? Are we obedient to the Father when it comes to the Great Commission? Beloved, I want to encourage you to practice these things. Think about how you're going to approach people. How do you approach people? How haven't you approached people? Why not? But, you know, find someone that you can speak to, that you can re do a role uh, rehearsal with, uh, You know, find someone that you can talk to and practice with. Practice preaching the gospel. You know, or just giving the message. You don't have to be up on a, in a pulpit um, preaching, when I say preaching the gospel. But just telling someone about Jesus Christ. Helping them to see their condition. And of, of course, like I said, praying for them. You know, you can call up a friend and do role plays with them. Whatever have you, just practice it. Um, but this is very important. God gave us a commandment to go reach the lost. And if we're not doing that, that's a problem. Beloved, be encouraged. Do whatever it takes to get out there to start spreading the message of Jesus Christ. Because this is a dying world. And it's very unfortunate. And this is a dramatic way of putting it. But people are on a conveyor belt to hell. And we have the opportunity to be used in helping them get off of that 
conveyor belt. So Jesus has all authority. He has told us to go out into the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching everything that he has taught us, all the commandments, and we are to remember that he will be with us always. So beloved, let us walk in the love of Jesus Christ, obeying everything that he has commanded us and just submitting fully to him. God bless.